Coming up, you can get this phone, or for 10 times more, you can get this phone. We'll review both. It's time to watch before you buy. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for Before You Buy is brought to you by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. Before You Buy is brought to you by iFixit. You can fix it, and iFixit makes it easy with free step by step repair guides, high quality replacement parts, and all the tools you'll need. For $10 off your purchase of 50 bucks or more, go to iFixit.com slash twit. And don't forget to enter the code Before You Buy at checkout. Hey, 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 welcome to Before You Buy, the product review show on Twitter, where we get all the latest and greatest stuff and give it to our, uh, our, our, our staffers, our friends, and see what they think about it, uh, what it's like to use it in real life. At the end of the show, we're going to review the latest flagship phone from Samsung, the Galaxy Note 4. But you know, at 800 bucks, it's kind of pricey. How much can you get for 70 bucks? Let's find out. Sam Sabri is an editor at Windows Central, and he has... In his hot little hands, this little phone, it's the Nokia 530. Hi, Sam. How's it going? Uh, it's going great. I know you've probably used every Windows phone out there. I used right. to have the 1520, which I loved. I played Big with phone. the 1120. Those are both very high-end Nokia. Oop, did mm -hmm. I say the word Nokia? We don't use the word Nokia, do we? We say Microsoft. Microsoft Lumia phones. <laughs> uh, these used to be Nokia. Uh, in fact, this one still says Nokia on the top. Is that is that going to be burned off? It, it might fall off over time, just kind of <laughs> fade away. <laughs> they are running a Windows Phone, in this case, Windows Phone 8.1, the latest version Correct. of the Windows operating system. Give us a kind of a rundown on this. I mean, this is not a, is this a phone, it is being sold in the U.S., this one's from Cricket, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a phone also intended for a, a global phone, right? Right, so this is a phone for emerging markets where people don't go on contracts and, you know, pay $99 up front and, you know, pay a little bit every you know, a few months for the next few years for a phone. This is where people buy a phone outright and use it for two, three years. So that's where people are most more price conscious. And that's why Nokia, I mean, Microsoft made a $70 <laughs> smartphone running Windows Phone 8.1. $70. There's got to be some compromises for that. There, there are some compromises. You do get Cortana, but you, you make a few uh, compromises, especially with the screen. Uh, you were noting earlier, it, it just doesn't look too good. And that's because it's missing clear back. Clear Black is uh, Microsoft's uh, polarizer, which allows gives you better contrast and it makes the screen look really good outside. Yeah, and all that's the why all the old Lumia phones really, I mean, like the fifteen twenty I used to have, popped, and right, I, they yeah. almost looked like OLED screens. These are not OLED displays. No, th this this is an LCD on the on the yeah. five thirty. Looks like a washed, a little bit of a washed out LCD. Yeah, viewing that. angles aren't too good when you start, you know, f turning around a little yeah. bit. But it, straight on, it's not too bad, and especially when you think remember it's seventy dollars, and that's. How you have to approach this phone when you review it, this is a $70 phone. It's not a Galaxy Note 4, a Lumia 1520. Right, it's right. something that you buy and uh, it's super cheap. Now, I got to say, given that, Windows Phone runs pretty snappily on it. Right. And so it's running, it has a uh, quad core processor from Qualcomm, the Snapdragon 200. Okay. Uh, 1.2 gigahertz. You can run most apps and games uh, as long it has 512 megabytes of RAM. So there are a few apps and games in the Windows Phone store that require one gigabyte of RAM or more, but those are very few, and for the most part, 99% of all apps and games in the Windows Phone store can run on this device. Including Microsoft Office. Right, uh, yeah, you get... <laughs> that's pretty impressive. So there are games that won't work, but those are going to be the, the very high-end uh, games right. and, that need and a lot of RAM. What, what we see is, you know, a, a new game might come out. It might not work on this device, but a few updates later, they'll optimize it and oh, it'll run on low memory devices. Now, you said Cortana, the speech recognition system built into Windows Phone, mm -hmm. works. Is, is it a full Cortana? Is the voice sound yeah, worse? Or? Yeah, no, it, it's this is Cortana. This is the same Cortana you'll get on the 1520, you know, a $600 smartphone. Wow. And that's the one great thing about Windows Phone is it doesn't matter uh, what price range you're buying at. The OS is the same experience across all levels. Uh, this is a Lumia, so you'll have a few exclusive Lumia apps compared to like uh, an HTC One for Windows Phone. Uh, but for the most part, everything that you expect on the 1520 will run on uh, the 530. Nokia, when they sold the mobility division to Microsoft, 
kept the here maps, all the here products, but they did license them to Microsoft. Is, is here maps and here navigation right. on here? You, you get here maps on here uh, so you can get offline map support. So this is great makes uh, for a great travel phone. If you don't want to bring your super expensive iPhone to, a, you know, when you're on vacation where pickpocketing might be a little bit higher yeah. than when you're at home, uh, you know, bring, bring the $70 phone for navigation. And if it gets stolen, it's not too much of a loss because you only spent 70 bucks on it. I guess you have to ask the question, how is it as a phone? <laughs> <laughs> it's it's not too bad. So it's it's weird. You know, my, my daily phone is the fifteen twenty. It's a high end phone I with you know, the phone. most yeah. most high end specs. And so when I spent the past week playing with this, it, it's it's a different experience. And you know, there are compromises. There's no front facing camera, no dedicated camera button. Okay. And uh, you know, it it's not too bad as a phone. I, I've going forward i think i'll use it more as like a gym device take it to the gym yeah, play small music enough it'd be good for that uh, i won't worry if you know if you drop a weight on it uh, right. you won't cry cuz it's so cheap it does have these colorful backs uh, i have blue you have what was it i have that? green green okay uh, you can get orange black and white and what's also cool too is the backs the shells pop off oh neat and so let's see if i can do it the shell pops off and then you can get another shell i'll put it on and this shell oh, has a flip cover. Oh, that's pretty cool. So, you know, you don't have to buy a flip, you don't have to buy a case and put it over the phone. You just replace the Snap back and on. the back already has a flip cover attached to it. I have to say, it also feels like a very durable phone. It feels like a phone that I could drop and not worry too right. much about, especially with that flip cover right. uh, case on it. No, it, it, you know, it, it's a great phone. You were mentioning earlier, this would be a great kid phone. And yeah. that's exactly who I'd recommend it for. If you if you want your child to you know, have a smartphone, but you don't want to spend a lot of money because they're a kid, they break things pretty easily. And, uh, you know, this is the kind of phone for them. Sam, does does Microsoft have kid friendly settings, parental controls, that kind of thing for, on Windows? Yeah, Phone? you you can uh, go into their account and set it as a child account, so they won't have access to certain parts of the web, certain apps and games. Uh, you can set it up so that they can't buy apps and games without your permission, and you know games will have to meet a certain rating, maybe you know E for everyone sort of thing versus right. uh, a teen rating and so on. And just to prove, kids can take selfies with this phone. I'm going to take one and another one. There you go. <laughs> See? They just have to turn it around. There's no yes. front-facing camera. Right. No front-facing camera. And this is 5 megapixels, this camera? 5 megapixels. That's it's, not bad. Uh, That's better than many fixed. selfie cams, frankly. Right. It's fixed focus, though, so you won't be able to tap and focus. Ah, and, uh, okay. So that's that's the another trade-off for it being 70 bucks is the focus is the same no matter what. Now, I have to point out that uh, as most uh, phones for developing markets, uh, this has a radio uh, built into it. Mm -hmm. Is it dual right. SIM as well? There's a there's a single SIM and dual SIM model. I don't know which one you have. I, I have see. a single SIM, but they have uh, both. Okay. most likely in emerging markets, that's where you'll find the dual right. SIM. Here in the U.S., I'm not sure if the T-Mobile and Cricket version are dual SIM, but most likely I think they're single SIM. But okay. when you go abroad, you'll find a dual SIM uh, yeah, version. You, you really don't need dual SIM in the U.S. I no. know so I'm on uh, um, uh, getting 4G right now, so it does support uh, the 4G network. I think this is right. This is pretty sweet, I have to say. Seventy bucks. Yeah. Uh, it's available bucks. in the U.S. from Cricket. Cricket, T-Mobile. If for the T-Mobile version, you can't get. I couldn't find it on the T-Mobile website. You have to go to the Microsoft Store. Uh, okay. com website. All right. And so cheap, seventy bucks. Uh, the sh extra shells are ten dollars each. You can get the flip shell version for fifteen dollars, and you know they can match your outfit and your mood <laughs> and stuff like that. This matches my outfit just fine. <laughs> just perfectly. All right. Pros and cons. Pros is cheap. Cheapest way to get Cortana and Windows Phone. Uh, you can run most apps and games on it. Uh, con, the display, not a fan of it. Um, of course, you're, you know, I've been spoiled by higher end displays. Low storage pace, uh, space, we didn't mention it, but it only has four gigabytes of uh, storage. So you'll have to get a micro SD if you want to you know, install more games, apps, right. and music. Uh, no selfies is another con, especially if, if you're a kid, unless you flip the phone around. Right. It, it does support SD cards, though, which is... <laughs> right, up to 128 gigabytes. That's a, something, you, something you can't say for all the flagship phones, I have right. to point out. Uh, so try, buy, don't buy. What do you think, Sam Sabri? Buy, buy, buy for your kid. Yeah. Buy for yourself if you want a phone at the gym or when you're snowboarding, skiing, and you just kind of want a phone to make phone calls and, you know, be stupid, maybe get it, you know, crash and stuff. And, you, you know, it's a great phone for that. Yeah. It's a great burner phone. It, yeah, exactly. I mean... Yeah. It's it's hard not to recommend it when it's seventy bucks and you get a good experience. Uh, you, there's worse ways to spend your money. You can't get a meal in Petaluma for two people for seventy <laughs> no. bucks. No. Uh, the Nokia five fifty. Sam Sabri, who is managing editor at Windows Central, he gives this 
a buy. We should point out that in the past, when we've talked to Sam and Dan Rubino and others, it's been Windows Phone Central, your new name, Windows Central, and it's windowscentral.com. Exactly. Same great people, same great content, brand new name. Thank you, Sam. Thanks. Sam Sabri, Thank great you. to talk to you. Really appreciate it. No problem. Anytime. Take care. We, uh, we're next going to talk with Padre, Father Robert Balasser. He's the host of This Week in Enterprise Tech, Tech Coding 101, the know-how show, Paco, we call it, Padre's Corner. And he took a look at something a little bit odd. It's called uh, the Live Pro Projector and Hotspot from Sprint. Let's watch. The Sprint Live Pro is marketed as the Swiss Army knife of electronics. Available from Sprint for $300 with a two-year service agreement, the Live Pro combines a hotspot, Pico projector, battery bank, and Android device into a neat 4.7 by 4.7 by 1.1 inch 14 ounce package. The left side of the Live Pro houses the adjustment ring for the projector, buttons for power and the power bank, as well as slots for SIM and micro SD cards. To the rear of the device is power, USB, full size HDMI, and a headphone jack. Underneath the Live Pro, you'll find a standard mounting point for attaching the Live Pro to a tripod and a kickstand for angling the projector. The entire package is built around a 5,000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery that can drive the hotspot for up to 10 hours. It was also enough to fully charge the 3,100 milliamp hour battery in my OnePlus One and still have enough juice for four hours of hotspot operation. That is a lot of power, but running the projector will kill the battery in about 100 minutes and having the hotspot active at the same time will drop your runtime below an hour. And unfortunately, because of the large battery and power draw, you can't charge the Live Pro from a USB port like you might with a standard hotspot. It needs a 12 volt adapter, which limits the charging options. The Live Pro comes with Android 4.2 Jelly Bean and a 4 inch 800 by 480 WVGA touchscreen. In addition to the touchscreen, the Live Pro has the full Android complement of buttons as well as quick keys for volume, projector, and sleep. I was a little disappointed that the Live Pro uses Android 4.2, but the dual-core 1.2 GHz processor makes it feel snappy. And even 4.2 gives the Live Pro notable features, like the ability to wirelessly project, and a secondary device for checking your apps. The projector is literally the bright spot of the Live Pro. Sporting a 100 lumen light source and a DLP element, the Live Pro natively projects 854 by 480 though it will scale inputs of up to 1080p. In addition to being able to play whatever media might be in the micro SD slot, USB port, or coming through HDMI, the Live Pro can also display whatever is seen on screen. The Live Pro packs a single speaker in the bottom of the unit that is plenty loud, which is good because when the fan starts up, you're going to need some volume. With decent indoor light power, loud if tinny audio, and an interface that can make the Live Pro a self-contained business projector or theater, the Live Pro definitely gets props for packing decent features into a small package. But then we get to the hotspot. And the hotspot on the Live Pro is, in a word, poor. I took the Live Pro to Petaluma, San Francisco, San Jose, Oakland, Berkeley, and Las Vegas, and it very rarely connected to Sprint's new Spark LTE service with any measurable signal strength. In fact, it almost never connected to Sprint's 3G service. We thought that there may have been a problem with the review unit, but even replacing it left us with subpar cellular coverage. What makes this unacceptable is that I've tried other Sprint devices, including a Galaxy Note and other Sprint hotspots, and connection speeds through those devices reached past 9 to 15 megabits per second, while the Live Pro struggled to go past 1 and 5 on a supposedly superior network. Still, with the combination of the other features, the lack of a usable hotspot wouldn't be a problem if the Sprint Live Pro weren't a hotspot that was supposed to use Sprint's latest generation LTE service that you had to pay for every month for two years. The somewhat sensical combination of technologies in the Sprint Live Pro left me scratching my head, wondering if this was the most stupidly awesome gadget ever or the most awesomely stupid Frankenstein's monster. Stupidly awesome. Awesomely stupid. Stupid awesome. Awesome. So stupid. Oh, so awesome. Oh, so stupid. In the end, the Sprint Live Pro is an interesting multifunction device with really bad implementations of some of those functions.
You want to like this, don't I you? I really do. I like the combination of gadgets. You know, it's a projector, it's an Android device, it's a battery bank, it's a hotspot. <laughs> The problem is, you know, as I said, does few, none of them well. It does none of those things well. I mean, the projector is okay, but it's underpowered. The battery yeah. bank's not big enough. The hotspot's horrible. I mean, if it's a hotspot, you're paying for service. If I can only get one megabit down and you know half a megabit up, it's it's crap. And, and here's the worst thing about it: I've used Sprint devices, and they are much much faster. So there's something wrong with the oh. device. It's not oh. Sprint. All right. Uh, although the support from Sprint isn't great either. Right, right. So let's get the pros and cons. Uh, on the pros, I do like the projector. I do like the battery bank. I like the idea of building smarts into a hotspot. So, you know, um, Android, the yeah. projector, the battery, that's great. On the con side, it's got to be that uh, it's an old version of Android, which I don't understand why you would do that. It's got to be that the charging is limited because you have to charge it via this 12-volt this plug here. You can't yeah. charge it from a, a USB source. And of course, it's a very weak hotspot. And if that's what you're really paying for, this is not the product for you. If you were to pick one thing that this does well, would it be the projector? It would be the projector. Okay. And, and I would say this, if I had the ability to buy this for like $300 but no contract, right. I actually would get it. I, I, it. It is a decent battery bank. It's a very cool projector. It's got a lot of features that I'd like to use but I'm not paying that 24 months of service right. for a hotspot that doesn't really work. It's right. a don't buy. It's a do not buy, sad to say, on, what is this called, the Sprint? It's Live Pro. Super Velodyne, <laughs> Super Heterodyne, Transmitter Receiver. You know, my son, who lives kind of in a quasi-frat house in college at CU Boulder, said, can you send me a, a, a projector TV? They want to watch the football games on, you know, 80 inches. I should have just sent him this. You could send, and the best yeah, part. Yeah, sure, son. The best part is he could watch it on this tiny little screen <laughs> and then project it onto a tiny wall screen. And it's the best of all worlds, would, really. His, his frat brothers would have killed him. I think so. Yeah, I would have, it would have been homicide. Yeah, yeah. All right, hey, thank you. Robert Balasser, he is the digital Jesuit. You find him on Know How, Coding 101. Padres Corner. Paco, I like that. Paco. Paco. You don't call it Paco? I don't call it Paco. I do now. All right. <laughs> and of course, uh, This Week in Enterprise Tech, right here on This Week in Tech, the Twit Network. Hey, we're going to jump over now to uh, our friend Bi Brian Burnett. He is our technical director on this show. That means he pushes all the buttons. And this is an amazing thing. But he is now going to fade from me to his review of something new. This is Brian Burnett from Before You Buy and Twit, and I'm here to show you the Velodyne WeQ 10-inch subwoofer. At first glance, this looks like any other subwoofer, a black square box. They have done a little bit of a, a swoopy design on the front grille that kind of adds to it, so it's uh, it definitely feels well-made, has a black matte finish to it. Uh, some of the features of this sub are it has a 390 watts dynamic base and 195 watts RMS power. After removing the front panel, you can see the, the main driver, and on the top left corner is an IR receiver for the remote that comes with the, the subwoofer and a digital display. On the right side of the subwoofer is a mic input for auto-detecting your, your room settings, and uh, but we'll get into that more later. And on the bottom of the subwoofer is a port that fires the bass downward, uh, spreading out, extending the distance of the base. And it, I would be remiss if I didn't add googly eyes to that. Taking a closer look at the back, you'll see that you have a low pass crossover dial. Um, next to that is a channel uh, for using the wireless box, uh, manual volume up and down controls. Below that is a standby mode or always on switch, a output and input for low frequency, an IR input, and below that is speaker level inputs uh, and your power button. The other two accessories that come with the subwoofer is a remote, which is pretty basic. Um, probably my only complaint of this feeling kind of cheap is, is the remote. It's pretty much the bare bones that they could do. Uh, and then the box that allows you to wirelessly transmit to the subwoofer. One of the features I liked most about the Velodyne was the one-touch auto EQ button that aids in setting up the subwoofer. So once you've found the perfect place for your subwoofer in your setup, uh, you can use this to dial it in. Breaking it down for pros and cons, the number one pro for this subwoofer is the sound. Uh, it had a really good low frequency bass to it, um, and 
added a lot to the movie watching experience. Uh, the second pro is that it's wireless. This helped a lot when finding a position for it and I could place it in places that I wouldn't be able to normally with uh, wires connected to it. And finally, the build quality. This is a really solid feeling uh, subwoofer. There's no loose panels. Everything's put together really well. And on the con side, it would have to be price is the only one that I could really come up with for this subwoofer at $799. It is pretty pricey, but the sound is really nice. And maybe my second con would be cheap feeling accessories, but it's kind of a small con. So is the Velodyne WeQ a buy, try, or don't buy? I would have to give it a buy. Uh, this is a really good sounding subwoofer if you're in the market. Uh, it has a couple of features that make it easy to set up and the wireless, having it being wireless makes uh, all the difference uh, when setting up a subwoofer. A lot of people overlook the need for a subwoofer, uh, but if you've ever watched your movie with a sub and then try watching it again without the sub, you'll know what I mean when I say that subwoofers do make a big difference. And having the subwoofer be wireless meant that I could put it in the right place for my setup, which is far more important than buying an expensive subwoofer and not having it in the right place. This has been Brian Burnett from Before You Buy reviewing the Velodyne WeQ 10 inch wireless subwoofer. Thanks for watching. Well, there you go. A buy from Brian Burnett, our technical director on the Velodyne YQ wireless subwoofer. We go now from subwoofer to snubs. Hi, Shannon Hi. Morris. How are you? Host of Techzilla. Yes. And uh, always welcome here on the show with. What is this? A keyboard? <laughs> it is. It's it the... sounds like it sounds like a, a Lamborghini or something. <laughs> the Tesoro to... Lobero Supreme. What a name! Supreme mechanical keyboard. All right, Tesoro Lobero. What does that mean? The treasure of I don't know what that means. Sierra Madre. Sure. It's a monster keyboard. Tell <laughs> it us is. about it. It's huge. So this is a gaming mechanical keyboard, and it costs 140 bucks. So there's three really cool standout features that I liked about this. The first was the LED backlighting. It's full RGB LEDs. Pretty. Too. Oh, so you can have any color. Any color. But the unfortunate thing about Ooh. this, yeah, check this out. So I have five different profiles I can hit. So they're all, Ooh. I set them up to all be different colors. Mm -hmm. And you can go in between them with the little function keys at the top and by hitting down on this little function tesoro key. So you can have it be the color of your League of Legends team. Yes, but the unfortunate thing that I noticed about this, and I currently have it on fade, so it'll fade back and forth between the colors. Oh, you can only do one color at a time. So you can't do separate colors for separate keys. So if you wanted to oh. do like WASD in red that and would be cool. yellow, that would be awesome, but they don't do that. The only thing that you can do that's similar is by turning them all the way up so that you have just the gaming ones oh, okay. lit and the rest of them are turned So they off. do highlight the critical keys. Yeah, but right. I would rather it just be like a bunch of different colors Wouldn't so I nice? could have a full rainbow, yeah. which would be awesome. Red but... keys for directional, yes. blue keys for weapons, that kind of thing. So the second thing that I found was really cool with this is the fact that you can do macros. So you normally see on a mechanical gaming keyboard is a whole side macro over here right. where you have a bunch of different keys that you can like choose. Like function keys. Sort so of. instead of having those keys over here, they've put them down here and there's just three of them. Yeah. The cool thing about these three keys is you can record a certain combination of key sets. Like if you're playing a RTS game and you have a really cool combination, you can record it for your actual speed in real time gaming mode and play it back just by hitting that key. So I set mine up on my computer to just do a quick feature where it presses in a whole bunch of things that say the full sentence whenever I hit that key. That's nice. Yeah, it's kind of cool. And you can do that for all three of these and it, you can just hit it with your thumb. It's much easier than having to push your finger out, which I really liked about this, especially when I was in my game mode. Now this looks like a metal finish, but it's, it's plastic. Yes, it is plastic. They did do this nice metal finish, or it looks like brushed, brushed metal, metal along yeah. the sign. So it does look really nice and very pretty but it's definitely not really metal. And then I also wanted to point out that they have, instead of just having a metal or a plastic backing here, they did include rubberized texture on the feet so it doesn't bounce
bounce around as you're getting into the games really, really quick. And the last really cool thing that they included on here is extra ports. So if you plug in the microphone and the, uh, the he headphone ports on your computer through this braided keyboard, uh, this braided cord, you can also plug in your own headphone and mic through here. You will need to plug in an additional DC out right here to power those. And if you want to charge any multiple items as well, like your phone while you're playing your games, you can do that as well. I was wondering why that the keyboard cord was so it's thick. Kind of now weird. I understand why. Yeah. It's got a lot of stuff nice going on. Nice braided keyboard cord, which Now is you really said right. mechanical keys and I, I think yes. uh, you know, sometimes in an office for instance, you want something that's a soft touch quiet key. So but these are pretty loud. When you're gaming, you want yeah. Some, some you want oomph. some nice tactile feedback, yeah. and these do give you that tactile feedback. It definitely does. They are a little bit softer than the Logitech keyboard that I have at home. They feel a little bit softer. I don't, but that's I don't feel the buckling keys. Yeah. Uh, so these quick. are brown, but they do have a blue version. Uh, if you're familiar with Cherry MX yeah. keyboard switches. So this is a Cherry. Yeah. So that, well, this is it kind of like cherry it's actually called kale <laughs> keyboard switches it's pretty much the same thing Anybody just a different different company is as makes good them as a different cherry brand cherry is crazy yeah so blue would give you the most tactile would you rather have a cherry pop tart or a kale pop tart i would prefer cherry myself wouldn't you yes. i would think so cherry blue mx switches <laughs> myself yeah. which is what i have at home but okay. this is pretty close so i okay. like that okay good but not great good but not great so it's supposed to last up to 50 million actuations, which means 50 million keystrokes. Okay. So that's going to last you a nice long time, and you can do up to 300 different macros per profile. Wow. And since you have five profiles, lots of different macros wow. that you can use for your games. 140 bucks, pros mm -hmm. and cons. So my pros and cons of this. It has a great build quality. It looks good, Really too. like that. Yeah. Really cool features, mm -hmm. and I like the additional ports that it put in. Mm -hmm. On the con side, though, you can only do one color at a time, which irks me. I really want to get colorsome on there. And the software. Can I show you this software real quick? <laughs> yeah. It's terrible. Is it complicated? It is so bad. Here, oh, me... it's ugly. <laughs> Look at this. That's a model of the keyboard itself. It is so ugly. It looks like it a bad Winamp skin. It took me half an hour skin. to figure out how to actually change the yeah. colors. You have okay. to hit your profile and then double click right. on there. It's like, oh, that's annoying. And there's no software implementation. It's it's just ugly. Well, so I didn't like the software. I think they should update that for you know people that are in their 20s and 30s. <laughs> Definitely a con. <laughs> buy, so. try, don't buy on the Tesoro Lobera Supreme Gaming keyboard. Buy, try, or don't buy, I give it a try. So it's up there. I hate the software. I think they should update that and include more additional LED colors. I don't often play games, but when, but I, when do, I do, I play it on the Tesoro Labera. <laughs> should be. That's who they should get to do this. Thank you, Shannon Morse. Thank we you. can catch you on uh, Texilla. Yes. On a regular basis on Revision 3. T-E-K-Z-I-L-L-A. -E mm -hmm. -E -Z -Z <laughs> is Patrick treating you right? Patrick is a horrible co-host. <laughs> No, oh, tell kidding. me about it, girlfriend. <laughs> I could tell you such stories. I love that no, guy. I love Patrick, too. I said, <laughs> I, I'm jealous you get to work with him all the time. Thank you, Shannon. Thank you. Shannon Morse, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to review uh, the phone that you're about to buy. Yes. Just came out. I already it's, bought it. You already bought it. You're about to get the hottest new phone on the market today, at least until next week, the Galaxy Note 4. That's coming up in just a second. But first, I want to show you my toolkit. Don't you love iFixit? Who doesn't love iFixit? These are the folks who, uh, you, you've seen them online, they tear down everything. They just tore down the Mac Mini, and that's how we find out, you know, things like the uh, Mac Mini's RAM is soldered on. The iFixit toolkit is just part of what iFixit really is. They like to think of themselves as, as the free online repair manual for everything. And I don't just mean, like, your iPhone or your, or your computer. You can repair your refrigerator, your home appliances, your clothing, even your bicycle with the manuals free online step-by-step -step repair guides at ifixit.com. You got a red ring of death on your Xbox? iFixit can fix it. You want to swap the battery on your uh, Galaxy S3? iFixit can help you. iFixit has you covered with 10,000 repair guides for everything from electronics to home appliances, clothing, and even your bike. They make also the most trusted repair tools for consumer electronics, including this the Pro Tech Toolkit. And I want you to get one of these because, or, or, you know, if you've got a geek in your life and you're trying to think of a birthday, Christmas, or, or other special occasion, present, an anniversary gift, a wedding gift for the groomsmen, wouldn't that be great? The iFixit Pro Tech Toolkit includes iFixit's amazing 54-bit driver kit, 
with 54 standard specialty and security bits. Listen to the bits. It's got, yeah, it's got Phillips. Yeah, sure. It's got Penelope. Torx, sure. Tri-Wing. Those are used on some video consoles. Yep. It's even got a triangle bit for McDonald's toys. This kit's got everything. The swivel top precision driver. It's perfect for uh, turning those screws. And a flex extension makes it easy to reach those hard-to-reach screws on stereo equipment and towers and stuff. They include ESD-safe precision tweezers, anti-static wrist strap, nylon spudger, metal spudger, plastic opening tools, lightweight, compact, and durable. This tool roll makes it easy to hit, hit the road with your kit. This, everybody loves getting this. This is one of those things, even if you don't ever fix anything, just having this is geek status. And I want you to get it for $64.95, backed by a lifetime warranty. And at ifixit.com slash twit, if you enter the code before you buy at checkout, you'll save $10 off any purchase of $50 or more. ifixit.com slash twit. Use the offer code before you buy and check out those more than 10,000 free step-by-step -step repair guides. This is a site every geek should know and love. And we do, too. Kyle Weems and the gang, I just think they're the greatest. At ifixit.com. This is not mine. I have mine at home. All right, I have the Galaxy Note 4. I know, Shannon, you're going to be looking at this with interest because... Oh, yes. Well, it's too late for you. I so if I hated it. this, you'd be, out of, <laughs> you'd be out of luck. But guess what? I don't. And this may come as a surprise for a lot of people because for years I've said Samsung. They junk their phones up. They've got great hardware, but what's with this touch whiz and this funky camera and all of that? Well, I was really interested in the new Galaxy Note 4. First of all, I've had every Note since the first one came out. I was the guy, yeah, who had the giant phone that you mocked. Now it doesn't look so big, does it? This is a 5.7-inch phone. It's actually physically smaller than the iPhone 6 Plus, even though it has a bigger screen, because Samsung doesn't have a lot of bezels. These are, this is almost edge-to-edge uh, -edge screen, and boy, what a great screen. It's a quad HD screen. I think it's 2560 by 1440. There are a few phones out now with that kind of resolution. Of course, the LG G3 was the first. Uh, the Nexus 6, which is coming out soon, will also have quad HD, but I got to tell you, Samsung Super AMOLED screens, there's nothing better. These look so good. The blacks are so black. The whites are so bright. The colors are so rich. Here, look over my shoulder. You can get a better idea of how this looks. Now, of course, you're looking on your screen at home. Notice one thing. I immediately took off TouchWiz, and I'm using the Nova Launcher. That's one thing I wanted to emphasize. You're not stuck with TouchWiz. If you like TouchWiz, there's some new features. In fact, let me, let me launch the, uh, the TouchWiz browser so you can at least see what Sam, Samsung is uh, or offering for you. TouchWiz uh, launcher, not browser. Um, they, they've customized things quite a bit. Actually, I don't know how to get in there anymore. But uh, <laughs> somehow I can get in there a little later on. But I do want to show you one of the things Samsung still does poorly. Now, this is TouchWiz. Uh, you can't change the quick settings. And look how cluttered this screen is. Once you get used to it, you might find it's really great that you have all these controls, but it feels like a 747 cockpit. Up here, <laughs> the quick touch settings, and of course, you can customize those to your heart's content. This is brightness, and one of the nice things about Samsung, and a lot of others don't do this, you can have auto brightness, but nudge it a couple of stops up or down, depending on your personal taste. So if you want to save battery, nudge it down by two. If you really like a crisp, bright screen, nudge it up a couple, or just put it right in the middle. These two buttons you'll never use. S Finder is basically a global search, forget about it. I don't even remember what Quick Connect does. It's connect to somebody else using a Samsung phone in your neighborhood. Who cares? Forget, <laughs> forget Quick Connect. These, this is just, that should not be there. I should be able to get rid of this. These are my notifications. Some of them, of course, are mine. Notice the Samsung's doing something, something kind of interesting here. I have it set up so that it will automatically bond different connections. So I can use the 4G plus the Wi-Fi for faster downloads. I don't know of any phone that does That's that. That's cool. That's kind of a nice feature. Samsung also has stayed with the physical home button. For me, that's a little bit of a negative. I'm not a big fan of physical home buttons, but I gotta say, it, it works. And they have capacitance soft touch buttons here at the bottom. Uh, unlike the standard with, uh, on, uh, with uh, uh, Android these days, these are not on-screen buttons. The plus of that is it doesn't take up any screen space. This is a back button, this is a recent apps button, and of course, the home button. And these can be overloaded to do more things if you press and hold, things like that. This is all customizable. And that's the thing that really I want to emphasize about the Note 4. This is a phone for people like you, Shannon, people who love 
to tweak, who love to change things, who love to set things. There are more settings in here than you could shake a stick at. It, it, Samsung, you remember on the last phone, the S5 and the previous Note 3, had multiple pages of settings. They've gone back to these super long <laughs> list. This goes on and on and on and on and on. There are wow. so many things you can set in here. I don't even know where to start. Let's go, I'll give you a couple and you can see that distinguish this phone. This is a fingerprint reader at the bottom. S5 had that. Um, it is probably not as good as Apple's iPhone fingerprint reader, but it's pretty darn good. I've, you could train it for up to three fingers. I've trained it for both thumbs and, a, and an index finger. You have to swipe pretty much vertically down, but it works. And more than working to unlock the phone, it also works with Google Wallet. It works with my banking applications. It works with LastPass. So if your applications are set up to use fingerprint authentication, and, and LastPass, for instance, which I use all the time, is that's a huge convenience. I loved that on the iPhone. It does it very well on the Galaxy uh, Note 4. I should also point out that this has a massive battery in it. It is a 3320 milliamp hour battery, and it's removable. Yes. This is one of the last killer feature phones on yes. the market that still <laughs> has a back, crappy though it may be, that you can pull off and you can get access to. Look how big that battery is. You can also add an SD card up to 128 gigabytes. That kind of makes up for the fact that they only have 32 gigabytes of storage on the, on the phone. I find that's ample. I'm very happy with it. Uh, and the fact that I could put a big SD card in there kind of makes up for that. You'll also notice a couple of extra things on the back here. Besides the really excellent 13 megapixel, I'm sorry, 16 megapixel camera, there's, uh, like on the S5, there's a fingerprint, not a fingerprint, a um, uh, heart rate monitor and something they call SO2, oxygen monitor, and you hold your finger there and you forget it, you're never going to use that. It also <laughs> has a pedometer in here and all that ties into the Samsung S Health application. One more feature that the notes have become famous for, the S Pen Stylus. It works better than ever on this. I love it. Very nice stylus pressure sensitive so you can get fine lines and you can get thick lines it really is and it's very fluid you can see how fast it keeps up that's probably because there's three gigs of ram in here the snapdragon 805 processors run at 2.7 gigahertz i have the unlocked european version which has samsung's proprietary octo core exynos processor uh, running at a slightly slower speed but i have to say plenty of processing power this thing is a monster um, the camera, you know, arguably the best camera on the market today. I would say without a doubt, oh, let's close this out. Without a doubt, uh, the best camera uh, on an Android phone. It competes very well with uh, Apple's iPhone 6 and has some very nice features. Um, who took that? Oh, that's a selfie. <laughs> that's one of the features is you can, you can turn the phone around. There's a selfie version that when you turn it around, it actually sees your face, counts you down with haptic feedback, you don't have to use the front camera. You might, though, because it's 120 uh, uh, degrees angle on the front camera. It's a special selfie camera, and it's a pretty good front camera. I think it's a 3.7 megapixels, so that's great. Also, Ultra HD video. Let me play it back here. Um, I just took this video. Uh, let me see if it's going to turn sideways. Yeah, but the, the quality of the video, you really can't see here. Superb. They're this, the amazing... HD video. <laughs> I work with weirdos. I'm sorry, what can I say? Um, it, it, the picture quality is excellent. I couldn't be happier with this. I'll put some samples up online, but it, one of the reasons people are buying the Galaxy Note 4 is because it does in fact have, I bet you for you this is true too, oh, yeah. has a really superb camera. Now one thing we, we dinged the S4, uh, S5 and S4 for is all of the camera modes, they go on and on. Samsung's been listening. They've really stripped out a lot of the weirdness that they put in the S5. For instance, yes, the modes are there, but you can turn them off so you never see them. So if you never want to use beauty face or multiple shots, or the, you could just turn them off, pick the ones you want. By default, only a few are turned on. I do like selective focus. We've seen that before on the M8, the HTC One, and uh, the Lumia phones. That's the ability to pull focus in or out depending on what you want after you take the picture. The sports shot is kind of interesting. It now has several modes within the sports shot. If you take a picture, you can choose to have, in fact, I think I did it with Burke. Let's see, I'll go back and see if I can find that. So I had Burke walk across the scene and you can choose whether to erase him completely or have multiple shots of him 
uh, walking across the scene. You get to choose. You can have a, that's the drama shot. And when you have the drama shot, you could pick which of these images. So I shot him as he's walking across, and I can have as many of him as I want. This is a nice thing. I, I think you're going to have fun with this. Now, obviously, Burke walking across the set is not very interesting, <laughs> but if somebody's snowboarding, diving off a, a diving board, uh, doing something that's actually interesting, this is a very nice feature. I was very pleased with this. And again, it's hidden away. So if you're not interested in it, you don't have to see it. The eraser shot's hysterical because it looks at the original and then erases unwanted moving objects. Ooh. I like it. Bye-bye, Burke. So... <laughs> <laughs> So it, they've really put some thought into this. They've added nice features, but they've hidden them away so that you don't have to see them. In fact, in general, TouchWiz is much cleaner. They've listened to people, and they've taken out a lot of the cruft, including the multi-page uh, settings, the weird stuff in the cameras. And I think this just even looks better. Lots of features in here. Yes, you can touch and pay with your Google Wallet or other credit cards. NFC is built in. I think the S Pen works great. Remember all the weird jet motion and gestures and things like it would look at your eyes, you could scroll up and down. They took all of that stuff out. It does the things that really matter. For instance, it'll notice if you're looking at it and not go blank if you want. Uh, you can still do a screenshot by wiping your hand across it. Of the few of the things that were actually useful are still there, but a lot of those weird things like scrolling by moving your eyes up and down, Gone, <laughs> gone, and I have to praise uh, Samsung for doing that. For a long time, my mom used a Galaxy Note 3 in easy mode. If you if you know somebody who doesn't want anything too fancy, the easy mode is big icons, very easy to use, and really takes a lot of the complexity of a phone like this uh, out of the picture. So I'm very pleased uh, with that. Samsung has done a good job listening to its users, improving the phone, an amazing screen. The S Pen works great. Uh, it's got uh, a lot of power in it, including a bunch of battery life. I'm, I'm getting, I'm uh, currently at 31% after about eight hours, and that, that's when you get a new phone, you use it a lot. I think it's going to yeah. get even better than that. And because it's removable, 20 bucks, you pick up an extra battery, never I'm have to worry so about running out. Up another battery. Oh, no wonder I'm killing the battery life. There's that flash on. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, pros and cons here. Gorgeous screen, quad HD, and, and it's not sluggish at all because they've jammed a lot of processor power. In fact, the specs in general are amazing. 2560 by 1440. The, uh, the, it's almost a 3 gigahertz processor, 2.7 hertz gigahertz quad core processor in a phone? That's amazing. Um, I uh, really like the 16 megapixel camera. On the back, the front camera is 3.7 megapixels. Optical image stabilization. Infrared IR is back, so you can use it as a remote control. The Ooh. Samsung TV app makes that very easy to set up. Ant Plus and a lot of other multimedia things people really like. Uh, the S Pen works great. The fingerprint reader actually works. Hey, kudos to Samsung. And I think the pedometer, the health monitors are, are really nice. On the con, well, because it's got TouchWiz on here, Remember, this is a KitKat phone, but Lollipop's going to come out any day now, and you know that will be available to people who use Nexus phones, for instance, but not for TouchWiz phones for quite some mm -hmm. time, because Samsung has to uh, uh, take that uh, source code and fix it and make it work with TouchWiz. That slows everything down. So it is KitKat. I'm going to have to say that's a negative, given that Lollipop is due any minute now. The speaker's not great. It has a single speaker in the back. It's loud, but kind of tinny. Um, and the price, whoa! Uh, if you get this from a carrier with, uh, with a two-year plan, $300, is that what you paid? Nope, I'm doing the full price. <laughs> and the full price, $800 <sighs> for this phone. Actually, I think we found it on Amazon for uh, You can find it as little as $650. Do you find it for $650? Yeah. If wow. you do the smaller gig version, the 32 gig. I should have shopped around. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. It's very expensive still. Yes. Uh, especially when you see phones that are very close in spec, like the OnePlus One for half that much. And also, you've got to remember the Nexus 6, Google's Nexus phone, is going to have many of these same specs for about the same price, but will have Lollipop and a pure Google experience. You're really going to have a tough I decision. Want one too. You're going to have a tough decision <laughs> ahead of you. But here's the good news. I'm very happy to say I'm definitely given a buy. You did the right thing on the Galaxy Note 4. Samsung has listened to all the complaints, complaints I made about having too much cruft on it, making it too complicated to use. They've kept the stuff that people really like, and they've made an amazing power horse of a phone. A definite buy on the brand new and very expensive 
Samsung Galaxy Note 4. Thank you, Shannon Morse. Thank you, Brian Burnett. Thank you, Father Robert Balliser. Uh, Sam from Windows Central, thanks to you for watching. We do uh, this show, brand new, fresh content every single Tuesday right after Security Now. You can watch it live. Uh, you know, it's kind of chopped up when you do it live, but you can also get the full show at our website, twit.tv slash BYB. You can also find it on uh, YouTube, youtube.com slash before you buy. Actually, there's a little something special we do there on the YouTube channel. Not only do you get the whole show, but individual reviews are there too. So if you want to share, say, a Galaxy Note review, uh, with someone who's interested in buying one, you can do that directly from the YouTube site. We also uh, invite your comments and questions and suggestions for products you'd like to see reviewed at byb at twit.tv. Subscribe. Make sure you get every episode. We're on all the podcatch, podcatcher clients. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we'll see you next time. you got to watch before you buy. Bye-bye.